I can't believe I did this! <laughs> Mother would be so furious. Oh, straight into the conflict. Good, okay, I forgive you. Rapunzel then has to grapple with the decision she's made, struggling between her newfound freedom and lingering sense of guilt. It's a great conflict. What she doesn't know won't kill her, right? This would kill her. This is so fun! I am a despicable human being. And also apparently hilarious. Thank you, Flynn. <laughs> it's funny because teenage girls and mood swings, am I right? So Flynn decides to try and capitalize on her indecision and coax her into giving up. I get back my satchel, you get back a mother-daughter relationship based on mutual trust, and voila, we part ways as unlikely friends. No! Oh, come on! Oh, come on! Hey, you see, she is gullible and naive, just not enough to hinder her in any way. In other words, not a character flaw. Probably be best if we avoid ruffians and thugs, though. That'd probably be best. <laughs> Yes! That's better! Throw her into her worst nightmare and see how she copes. Put the old resolve to the test. I love it. Wait on deep inside. I've got a dream! I got a dream. I've got a dream. I've got a dream. Got a dream. I hate it. Make it stop. I thought we were testing her resolve. What happened? I know a great place for lunch. I mean, I'm not a fan of Flynn, but that was actually a good plan. I was genuinely wondering if it would work. What the hell have okay. <laughs> You don't look so good, Blondie. Maybe we should get you home, call it a day. Okay, there she is, scared out of her wits. Every fear and anxiety her mother ever instilled in her is racing through her head. Will she crumple and give up on her dream? What's she gonna do? How's she gonna- <laughs> Aha, plot door. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh, sweetie, that decision's too hard for you. Why don't we just let the plot handle that? Is this you? That reward's gonna buy me a new hook. Anyway, so all the Vikings start arguing over Flynn and who gets to turn him over to the guards for a reward. I'm broke! Get back! Good. Thank you. Now, maybe Rapunzel will actually be forced to... Give me back my guy! Take on 50 huge hulking Vikings to get him back. Stop that! Not the rules! Put him down! No! Do not put him down! That's it. You're done. You don't get a royal escort anymore. Now you solve Lantern Thing on your own. That's what happens now. <sighs> okay, I don't know where I am, and I need him to take me to see the Lanterns because I've been dreaming about them my entire life. Good! If they're that important to you, you'll find a way, won't you? Find your humanity! Haven't any of you ever had a dream? I... Uh... You realize they want Flynn for a cash reward, right? Cash? Money? You understand what money- you know, well, of course you don't. Didn't that guy say he was broke and this guy needs a new hook? Rapunzel, your lanterns are free and observable from anywhere. We have people with no money and no limbs, but stop everything! Rapunzel just left her tower today and is making this face. Haven't any of you ever had a dream? Hit her with the axe. Wait, okay, no, don't hit her with the axe, but you know, scare her. Throw her out. Spit in her eye. I had a dream once. Damn it! Though I do like breaking femurs, you can cut me with the dreamers. Yeah. Luckily, her appeal to everyone's inner Mary child seems to resonate, and ultimately she's rewarded by learning that the scary men with pointy teeth her mother warned her about are actually ooey gooey princesses at heart, just like her. Oh, it like to quit and be a florist. Ulf is into mine. Attila's cupcakes are sublime. Bruiser knits, killer shows, then his little puppet shows. A ceramic unicorn. All the scary men with pointy teeth that she meets on her first day all happen to have the exact same hobbies? Really? It feels less like she's overcome a challenge, and more like she's discovered that the world conveniently aligns perfectly with her outlook. Right, which is exactly what happens when you're sheltered your entire adolescent life. Everything is easy and predictable, and all the bad guys vanish into rainbow clouds of sugar sprinkles. I mean, that's basically how Quasimodo and Nemo's first day out went, right? Yeah! Yeah, same thing. Oh, but what a fantastic message about how scary things can be unexpectedly wonderful. See, I ain't as cruel and vicious as I see. Yeah, great, but 
Why is it here? That's not what this character needs. Maybe she's a bit jumpy, but she already has a positive outlook on life. If you want to challenge her, you have to play against her character type, not dead straight into it. Our mission is to take a character with a positive outlook and somehow show her that life can be beautiful. Im Possibly out of his mind can't be done. To challenge her would be to say, okay, Rapunzel, some of the things your mother warned you about are real. There are thugs and ruffians, and maybe people who would want to hurt you. Still want to see the lanterns? Because that tests her, and that tells us something. I've got a dream. I've got a dream. I've got a dream. She's got it. This tells us nothing we did not already know. We already know that she's Buttermilk and Lollipop's manifest. We know. And with every passing hour, I'm so glad I left my tower. Like all you lovely folks, I've got a dream. Great. The whole point of this is that Gothel was wrong, isn't it? Oh good, I love those. Yeah, of course, all of her warnings were completely overstated. Unlike this. Guys, this isn't better than Gothel's approach, it's just the other extreme. No, Rapunzel, there's no cruelty in the world. No one would ever take advantage of you. Who told you that? What ruffians and thugs are these, exactly? And what happened to these guys? Because these are clearly not the ruffians and thugs that Gothel was talking about. But those guys do still exist. They're still out there. This is not putting her resolve to the test and seeing just how dedicated to her precious lanterns she is. This is nothing more than a showcase of her impervious virtuosity and innocence masquerading as an obstacle, not even very well. And it's not like she doesn't have flaws that they could be playing off of. She does. Gullible naive did say I'm a bit well mm, vague. Her, her own guide just tried to use her ditziness, her naivete, her gullibility, her immaturity against her to put her in danger. It it it, it just doesn't work. Gothel's all like, you can't do it, you're gullible and naive. And Disney's all like, ha, nonsense. She can do it because she's gullible and naive. Ha <laughs> ha. I, th I think that's probably what this face means. Well, shit, she's conflict proof. I'm a lover, not a fighter, cause way down deep inside, I've got a dream! You guys are really proud of yourselves, aren't you? Like, they're so convinced of their transcendent godlike princess creation. The idea of having her struggle with something is actually funny. Like, the idea of challenging her, it isn't an essential character-building tool. It's a trick they use to build cheap tension. That's the reveal. Surprise! She is that perfect! On an island that I own, and and rested and alone, surrounded by enormous piles of money. And maybe this wouldn't be so infuriating if it wasn't all predicated on the idea that she needs Flynn. She can't do it without him. Keeping Flynn around makes no sense. He's worse than useless. He's a jerk. He's kind of patronizing. He's trying to get her lost. He's putting her in unnecessary danger. He's trying to back out of the deal. He's the single greatest threat to her accomplishing her dream right now. She's just too stupid to notice. So I have made the decision to trust you. That makes you an idiot. And frankly, not the rules. Put him down. Doesn't this actually illustrate that she is more than resourceful and daring enough to handle this on her own? She can't save him from 50 Vikings and need his protection. Like, pick a lane. How is she only allowed to have a backbone when it means fighting to keep Flynn relevant? Because that, that's what I'm picking up. I mean, she gets to move the story. Just only if it's through him. If it's to actually accomplish her goal directly? No. I've been dreaming about them my entire life! Find your humanity! What does this speech even mean? How is she only empowered enough to assume that she's otherwise helpless? Alright, listen up, assholes, because I'm only going to say this once. I can't go by myself. Honestly, what am I watching? You'd let a poor defenseless girl go in that dark room with who knows what lurking in the shadows? What kind of man are you? Disney, that's great that you want your female characters to have backbone but it can't only show up when they're fighting their way back into a traditional gender role. Belle! If you hadn't frightened me, I wouldn't have run away. 
I am woman, hear me roar. I am empowered and emboldened, and I will be heard, and I demand the right to make you a sandwich. And then I will clean the entire house, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. So Rapunzel, the flawless godchild, successfully tames an entire bar of criminals. The guards show up, and they sneak out of back t together. Are you are you serious? You're, we're actually keeping this idiot around. You know, if you put half the amount of energy that you spent justifying Flynn's existence as you did trying to achieve your dream, half that. You could have been to the lanterns and back ten times by now. She does realize what he just tried to do, right? So, Flynn, where are you from? Oh no, of course, she's more interested in him now. Yes, of course, why wouldn't she be? I guess this entire incident slipped her mind. What is it gonna take for me to get my satchel back? Don't want you scaring and giving up on this whole endeavor, now do we? Maybe we should get you home, call it a day. I don't know, either she didn't notice, or she forgot, or she doesn't care, or she's an idiot. So, Flynn. So, Mr. I just tried to destroy all my hopes and dreams. Where are you from? You gotta say, didn't know you had that in you back there. That was pretty impressive. What was? Her asking an entire mob of criminals to altruistically forfeit a cash reward so she can see some lanterns? Yeah, impressive is one word for it. Miraculous is another. A bullshit comes to mind. That was pretty impressive. I know! I know. Oh good, she's building self-confidence. Yes, that's bound to happen when you're told something would be hard and then it isn't. Or when you're told something would be scary and it's mainly cupcakes in a musical. But maybe we can build up to something that could really challenge her. If you want to see the lantern so badly, why haven't you gone before? Uh... <laughs> oh, like a good question. Yes, I'm listening. Well... Or running from the law. That's okay, that question had a potentially very complex answer. We can leave that for later, that's fine. And speaking of questions with very complex answers... Run! Run! Yes, that is all the king's horses and all the king's men. You're still being chased by the law. You knew this. Seriously, why hasn't she... Does she not care about this? She's seen the poster! There it is! With his face right on it. Does she not realize that wanted poster means he did something bad? Yeah, you know what, never mind ethical hangups. Does she not care that this might get in the way of her accomplishing her dream? You know, getting arrested. Really? No, she has no questions about any of this. So, where are you from? Really? Teehee, where are you from? That's the extent of her curiosity and suspicion. Really? Who's that? They don't like me. Who's that? Who's that? That's not better! I mean, at least she's starting to look a little annoyed by all this, but does she just not care that he's a want- Come back! Fine, swing away, he could've killed someone, you'll never know. Can't hear you over my girl power! Whee! But it wasn't the time for questions, but I'm sure we'll come back to it. So, she's fine, is what you're telling me. I mean, never mind questioning him, she never questions herself. She never hesitates. None of this seems to be a challenge at all. Not giant men with axes, not hundred foot drops. Which, maybe if she'd been established as Tarzan of the Jungle Princess in the first place, that would be one thing. But this is where we started. This is her first day outside and she's already freaking Indiana Jones. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever met a sheltered, overparented shut-in. They're not exactly anyone's go-to in a crisis. Based on everything you've shown us about Gothel's parenting, Rapunzel should not have the ability to make confident, split-second decisions in high-pressure situations. Because her mother is a narcissistic villain. She deliberately deprived her of that skill. I mean, more and more, it really feels like Gothel's kidnapping and her influence are basically harmless. I mean, it doesn't look like it's disadvantaged Rapunzel in any way other than I guess, keeping her away from her royal birthright. Hell, if anything, I swear being locked away has actually made things 
easier for her. Her childlike naivete fixed this problem. Her magic hair, the reason she was locked away in the first place, that fixed this problem. Hell, maybe I've been reading this all wrong. Maybe this is a story about how we should all be more like abused kidnapping victims. Because they've clearly got their shit together. It, it's like everything that should be ruining her life is actually making it easier. Ow, my head. Speaking of ow, my head, why are you running into that hole? Did you not see water? Oh my god, the dam's broken. We must get to lower ground. Preferably a small contained space where we can drown quickly. Hey, there's no point. It's pitch black down there. Okay, now you're both gonna die. This would be a great time to reflect on just how much of a pain in the ass this guy is, right? She, she's gotta realize now that she was chased in here by murderers and guards that are after Flynn, right? This is all my fault. Unbelievable. This is all my fault. Yeah, I wish. I would love for her to have something meaningful to reflect on at this point, but she just doesn't. She was right. I about what? None of your troubles thus far have been anything remotely close to anything Gothel described. Mother was right. She said there would be dancing Vikings. I didn't listen. She was right. I never should have done this. Now, you know what? I would love to be able to gauge how Rapunzel's handling herself out there and comparing Gothel's hellscape to reality. I said reality, but unfortunately, that's impossible. Her role is purely reactionary. Her job has been to react to the conflicts that his character flaws generate. Flynn is dominating everything, and that would be enough. But no, she has to be oblivious and blind on top of everything else. I didn't actually think anyone could be more passive, oblivious, and just intellectually dumbed down as Belle. But well done. You guys actually did it. That's quite an achievement. But it's so handy, right? And I won't try to manage things because I can't think. You can do anything in your story if your character magically has no opinions on anything, never retains information over time to form her own thoughts, never asks any meddlesome questions. No, why bother? Just slap on the good girl blinders and walk. Everything will be fine. He knows this is all his fault, right? He knows. I'm so sorry, Flynn. Yes? And, Flynn, your response would be... <laughs> Eugene. Wrong answer. Also, what? Not, Rapunzel, I'm so sorry my criminal history is about to get us killed, no. Eugene. Typical. My real name is Eugene Fitzherbert. Someone might as well know. Your real name should be master of making everything about himself in any given situation. But sure, we'll go with Eugene for short. I have magic hair that glows when I sing. What? Flower gleam and glow. Let your power shine. <gasps> and hooray! The magic hair saves the day again. That's... swell. But, I mean, she's had a near-death experience on her first day out. That's a big experience. I mean, she might be even wondering whether she can even make it through this journey alive. Her head's gotta be doing all kinds of existential somersaults. We're alive. We're alive! Of joy! Is this what I was going to say? Yes. Sorry, that was my bad. I forgot the golden rule. Rapunzel is always fine. I I'm sorry. This is just not how any human being reacts to a near-death situation like that. It just isn't. I mean, maybe that's how you would think humans might behave if you were an alien robot. I mean, heaven forbid Rapunzel ever had to help anyone in a crisis. Oh my god, what an ordeal. You almost died. Uh, here, this blanket will help contain your excess happiness. And how is it she didn't get hurt? You just plowed yourself through a bunch of falling, wet, sharp rocks. I mean, Eugene's allowed to get hurt, because of course he is, but she's not. Again, except this time it's actually way more thematically relevant for her to get hurt. Or even, heaven forbid, get dirty. But still, no, not an option. So even when there's not a clear cut who's rescuing who dynamic, she still can't show physical or psychological signs of her experience. Does anything phase Disney princesses? Can they just stroll out of any and all disasters Daenerys style? I didn't see that coming. Eugene? The hair actually glows. 
Eugene. Also, what are you doing to his name? Why does her hair glow? Eugene. What? I'm sorry, go back. Eugene. Yeah, it's clearly Eugene. 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 You put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yes, what is it, dearest Rapunzel? Actually, why don't we go see what Mother Gothel is doing? Anyways, Mother G hey, Mother Gothel is trying to make a deal with these guys, you know, the two actually dangerous ruffians and thugs that Rapunzel just conveniently hasn't encountered yet. Yeah, they're now in league with Gothel. It comes with revenge on Flynn Rider. And, and she's scheming something which I'm sure will make sense later. Meanwhile, Eugene is gonna narrate for me. So, you're being strangely cryptic as you wrap your magic hair around my injured hand. Flower, gleam, and glow. Oh, yeah, it heals. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. And I, I guess it still works. That's quite remarkable, given what it's been through. I just realized, shouldn't the hair be starting to show a bit of where? It's been dragging on the ground this whole time. What wouldn't it make sense that as her journey progresses, the hair starts to get a bit messy, uh, knotted, maybe a bit disheveled, uh, matted? It'll come to me. Oh, I'm not freaking out. Are you freaking out? No, I'm just very interested in your hair and the magical qualities that it possesses. How long has it been doing that exactly? Forever, I guess? Mother says when I was a baby, people tried to cut it. They wanted to take it for themselves. Oh my god, they wanted to take it for themselves? Who would do that besides just sick people? Or sick people. Rapunzel, it's healing hair. It's not a TV. But once it's cut, it turns brown and loses its power. Brown hair is not magical. That's fine. I, I get it. I that's fine. I yeah, good, fine. A gift like that, it has to be protected. It has to be protected. Well, lucky for you then, it appears to be indestructible. It never gets dirty, it never collects twigs, leaves, sap, mud, bugs, or small rodents from being dragged through a forest, and it certainly never gets frayed, crimped, tussled, stained, ripped, torn, snapped, curled, frizzled twisted, frazzled, scruffy, or unkept in any way. You could probably drag that hair through a tar pit garnished with molasses, burrs, and chewing gum and still get a comb through it. Fantastic. Why don't we just add that to the extensive list of things that come easy to Rapunzel. Guys, you just tripped over your own conflict and kept walking. If she wants to protect her hair and see the lanterns, those two things should be at odds with each other, thus forcing her to decide which is more important, magic hair or her freedom. She doesn't get to keep her precious hair pristine and drag it halfway across the country. That's just not how anything works. A gift like that, it has to be protected. That's why Mother never let me... That's why I never left... What?! That's why I never left... Uh, 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 what?! That's why she never left?! Because of her hair?! Since when? I like it in here and- No, you are making shit up on the fly. I thought it was because of her mother. Her mother had broken down her self-esteem and convinced her the world was too dangerous. Was that not it? Is that not what you spent the first half an hour of the film hammering into our heads? Now her hair factors majorly into her motivations and you're only telling us now? Gothel was trying to protect the hair, yeah. Rapunzel shouldn't know that! No, Gothel told her this was about her own personal safety. She made sure that she believed that. I know these things because you sang an entire song about it! You know why we stay up in this tower? I know but... that's right, to keep you safe and sound, yeah. You're, you're telling me Rapunzel saw through all of that? all of Gothel's lies from the start? You know how much time we spent with these two arguing that one of them could have mentioned the hair? Not once did it come up. Not once! From either of them! It's kind of weird, isn't it? And you're telling me that that's why she got so awkward the last time the question came up? If you want to see the lanterns so badly, 
Why haven't you gone before? Uh, well... I foolishly thought that was she didn't think she could do it, or she didn't know the way, or she didn't want to go into all of her mother's abuse because it'd be super awkward. No, apparently this is the face of someone thinking about how important their hair is. No, that detail is essential to empathizing with this character. You can't just cram her central conflict into 10 seconds like an afterthought. Hey, she knew about the hair. She was fine with it, but now isn't. How poignant. No, if she felt the hair was a gift worth protecting, enough to sacrifice her freedom, that is the first thing we needed to know. That's what you open with. So we can track how her feelings evolve and priorities change. I mean, at this point, how is it she can't tell that Gothel was essentially using her as human facial cream? This changes everything. It, it's like, like suddenly nothing is what they told us it was. Now that I'm older, mother might just let me go. <sighs> I feel like I barely know her anymore. Or like I'm getting to know her all over again. Just like you! That's what it is, isn't it? The film wanted us to empathize with Eugene getting to know Rapunzel. So it withheld a crucial key to understanding her central conflict, all so we could hear it for the first time through Eugene's point of view. You never left that tower. Of course. Of course. No wonder I feel so alienated from this character in such an intimate, confessional moment. She's become a subject of pity for him. They don't want us to empathize with her. They want us to fall in love with her through Eugene. Get to know her anew, like he is, so we can appreciate his experience of Rapunzel as this strange, wonderful new occurrence in his life. It doesn't just glow. Why is he smiling at me? She's happening to him. That's what's more important than empathizing with Rapunzel and being in her head and following her growth and development. And you're still gonna go back? No. Yes. Ugh. It's complicated. Because of the abuse and overparenting, right? Please tell me that still factors into this, please. Because that shit actually is complicated. But protecting the gift of healing that doesn't even need to be protected where it can't even heal anyone? Who cares? It's complicated. It feels more like they want us to pity the idea that Rapunzel's conflicted at all about anything in the first place, rather than flesh out the decision she'll have to make. I don't care what it is, make it stop, it's making her sad. Well, a fake reputation is all a man has. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's falling in love, right? That's where we're going with this, that's what's happening. Wouldn't that make for a confusing development for her? Wouldn't that make her already complicated decision of whether or not to go home even more complicated? I mean, is she starting to think, oh, I can't possibly go home. I will never see Eugene again. And if she's attracted to him, wouldn't there be some awkwardness, some uncertainty of her own feelings? Um, well, I should, um, I, I should, I should get some more firewood. Yeah, like that. Thank you for demonstrating, Eugene. Where are her thoughts? Why don't I see them? Her eyes are so big they could swallow children whole. Confusion, attraction, indecision, we need to see it! Not just generic, happy, what is that face? Oh, what a nice young man. I just want to pinch his cheek. I mean, happy is fine, but there are just more story-relevant emotions you could use here. Ones that speak to her journey and build on her conflict. Not that we give a shit about that. I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I'm, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I keep going on about it. I, I'm, I'm gonna drop it right now. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna happen. It's fine. Fine, I'm fine, it's all fine. Continue. <laughs> I thought he'd never leave. Gothel's here! I mean, run, Rapunzel! Did you bring a conflict? We're going home, Rapunzel. Now. Y you don't understand. I've been on this incredible journey, and I've seen and learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got jokes now. I just listened for the sound of complete and utter betrayal and followed that. So Gothel tries to drag Rapunzel back home with her usual rhetoric of scathing guilt trip. I even met someone. I think he 
likes me. Likes you? Please, Rapunzel, that's demented. You're too naive to be here. Come with mommy. Mother. No! Uh, good. I I'm, I'm glad Rapunzel's standing up for herself. It still doesn't feel like she's overcome anything. It feels less like she's proven she can handle herself in the real world, and more like she's been lucky enough to stumble into only the most disnified, sugary, clean circumstances, and has magic hair. No! Oh. Rapunzel knows best. Fine, if you're so sure now, go ahead and give him this. This is why he's here. Don't let him deceive you. Trust me, my dear. That's how fast he'll leave you. You know what? That's that's a good idea for a conflict. I, I appreciate that. But is there really any doubt whatsoever that Eugene hasn't completely forgot about the crown? And if that's the conflict you were going to use, you didn't need Gothel. That could have just developed organically on its own. He could have brought it up, even in passing. Just give Rapunzel something to think about. Ah, yes, I see the problem. Yeah. This is why he's here. Don't let him deceive you. Give it to him what you see. I will. Yeah, I I'm sure she will. And I have no reason to think it won't turn out fine. Wait, should we just tell Gothel? I'm sorry, lady. You are an excellent villain. You are wicked. You are believable. But you are banal. You are no match for Rapunzel. She is conflict proof. She's abuse proof. Why would he like you? Come on now, really. Look at you! You'll think that he's impressed? I mean, 18 years of abuse hasn't broken her by this point? What, a few more minutes is gonna matter? No. Anyways, whether or not this conflict actually proves to be an effective obstacle for Rapunzel, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Next morning, Maximus, the guard police horse, he, he was with the guards, has finally caught up with Eugene. Well, I hope you're here to apologize. Now, Rapunzel is still reeling from her conversation with her mother, <laughs> by which I mean she's fine, flies into raw Disney princess mode. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she just ran straight on at a horse, gallivanting towards her. Easy, Easy boy. Easy. What the hell am I watching? How does she know how to tame a horse? Easy. Jesus, I'm tired of looking at your face. Yes, Disney, we see her. Your freaky eyes, why are her pupils always dilated? It's freaking me out. Now sit. <laughs> sit. What? Now drop the boot. Drop it. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. She honestly is a joke, isn't she? She's a joke at this point. It's like the writer sat around like, Oh yeah, my princess is so perfect, she walks into a biker bar, everyone breaks in a song. Oh yeah, well, my princess is so perfect, she can tame a police horse just by fluttering her eyelashes at it. Look, today is kind of the biggest day of my life. Keg me with a rake. Nobody appreciates you, do they? Do they? I need you not to get him arrested. Wow. You're gonna be so good at your job. Sorry, justice system, Disney princess comes first. And it's also my birthday. Just so you know. You can't just rearrange the law because it's your birthday and you want to see some stupid lights. When does Rapunzel realize the rest of the world exists? Is this supposed to reassure us that she's gonna be a good princess? She's using charm and flattery to keep a criminal away from law enforcement so he can do her a favor first. So really, besides super hair, super strength, all the other superhuman shit she does, Rapunzel's most reliable problem solving comes from her ability to shrug her shoulders and charm her way out of anything. Just so you know. <clears throat> oh, it's like she got her people skills from Sebastian. You gotta botch your eyes like this. Although, given who actually raised her... It's very annoying. I'm just teasing. You're adorable. I love you so much, darling. That's about the first piece of her characterization that might actually make sense. Oh, he's nothing but a big sweetheart. I need you not to get him arrested. Yeah, I have a feeling shallow, corrupt, manipulative psychophant. It wasn't really what Disney was shooting for. Just for 24 hours and then you can chase each other to your heart's content, okay? Okay, wait, wait, but you realize after that he's arrested 
and taken away, put in jail, possibly execute. I thought you were in love with this idiot! What was this? I even met someone. And this? I think he likes me. Just for 24 hours and then- And then you could be arrested or executed, I don't give a shit. Oh, she can't both be in love and not care if he gets caught. She can't- Oh my god, this character. Ha! <sighs> okay, explain to me. The entire point of this scene. Why would he like you? Come on now, really. This is why he's here. Don't let him deceive you. Well, thank you. That was record time. That conflict is now totally erased. How could she be conflicted about his intentions if she doesn't even care? Give it to him what you see. I will. I'll prove to you he loves me for who I am, not just because of some deal. He would never ditch me after he's used me like a piece of shit. Not like I would and plan to. You see, Gothel is... Helpless. She's all, <laughs> I will use your boyfriend against you. No, you won't. Rapunzel just resets every time she gets the slightest bit overworked, like a cheap microwave. If he's lying, don't come crying. Mother What a waste of a perfectly good villain. You suck. I just imagine Gothel crying in the bushes. What's wrong with my evil? It's like watching a world-class actor breaking their back, trying to get a reaction out of the green screen tennis ball. What, if you're there anyway? Well then why do you need him at all? Anyway, so it's Rapunzel's first day in the kingdom. She runs into town and, wow, it's all you themed. Oh my god, it's happening! Her hair is holding her back! Finally! She will be forced to... Get... A hair tie. That's good. You, you just you get that right up out of your way, so it doesn't bother you at all. That's... I do. Excuse me. So this is a movie about a girl with like a hundred things that should hold her back, but never do. Oh, is your hair getting in the way of you living your life to the fullest? Let's just get that right out of your way, dear. We wouldn't want you making any hard choices. You might hurt yourself. I'm, I'm not sure which is worse. Being sheltered up in her tower or just how insufferably mollycoddled she is by her own goddamn movie. Stop fixing everything for her. The whole point of giving characters problems is that they're actually problems, not mild flash-in-the-pan inconveniences. It for the last princess. Oh, but wait, she sees a mosaic of herself as an infant princess. Maybe, yeah, that's what I thought. But maybe that's okay. She had a rough night. She needs to let off some steam. Her abusive mother tracked her down, screamed at her, called her ugly, unlovable, said her boyfriend was using her, and, and if he was, don't bother coming home. Now she's all worried about him ditching her. If there's anyone with shit to dance off, it's definitely... <laughs> That's not why she's dancing, is it? No, that is definitely the dance of someone with not a care in the world. <laughs> oh, but Eugene's problems all managed to survive from one scene to the next. That's a miracle. Because of course Eugene still gets problems. Rapunzel's one of them. Not only is he still a wanted man, he still gets to grapple with his feelings for Rapunzel. It's the let's all gawk at her dance! Twirl, gawk, twirl, gawk, twirl, gawk. Is she eyeing up his thiefly man beef? No! Ew, female attraction is icky. Shop and twirl! Gawk, twirl, gawk. Also, painting, reading, dancing, cupcakes, doing her hair. This is all shit she already does every day! How are we supposed to appreciate her newfound freedom if it looks exactly like being kidnapped? Guys, I know you just want to make music videos of Rapunzel dancing and playing and spreading joy and blissfully falling in love, but that goes against everything you've set up. There's not a glint of suspicion or concern in her eye, so why bother with this at all? I mean, screw it. Just have them sit on a log and do crafts and dance. You know, the things you want to be doing.
guys, if, if we're done congratulating Eugene's falling for a hot princess, could we maybe get back to writing our protagonist? Or has that ship sailed? To the That's what I thought. 